Okay, we're going to look at polynomials first. And we're actually moving into intermediate algebra. So, first couple of questions should be fairly straightforward, but let's just see how you do with it. That is not a quiz, just I'm going to want you to just work on a couple of things, okay? Because um, I haven't introduced this, but I think that you'll, you're likely to be okay. Uh, we'll see. There probably will we'll address. Okay, so we have, uh, let's say, x squared plus 4x minus 3 minus 2x squared minus 5x plus 9. Let's see if you can simplify that. If not, it's fairly easy to explain and, and we'll, we'll address it. Okay. Not sure where I laid my chalk here. Uh, okay, I'm gonna need a decent explanation here. So we'll leave this one. Well, I'll show you this one, but then we'll start with a couple of easier examples. So it involve negatives and negatives and stuff like this. Okay. This means the same as this. And I can leave the parentheses off of this because we haven't done anything. There's no distributive law on this, okay? Well, I'm just going to use the rule. Okay. Subtracting this is like adding what you get if you multiply this by negative one. We multiplied all these by negative one. We would get a negative two x squared plus five x and a negative nine. Okay. Now, the other that's one rule. If you multiply by negative, uh, if you got a negative in front of a quantity, you change all the signs. There's an easy way to connect that to the basic rules that we'll just go with that idea for right now, okay? Um, then we want this expression to have the same value as this expression, no matter what x is, okay? In other words, an equivalent expression will have the same value for every possible value of x. To make that happen, we can't combine an x squared term with an x term or with a constant term. Okay, call that a constant term because it doesn't have an x on it. Okay, so if we're going to regroup this as an x squared minus 2x squared. Plus 4x plus 5x plus negative 3 minus 5. We do x squared. Do x squared minus 2x squared. How many x squared do you have? Show me with your fingers. Yeah, it's going to be negative. It's going to be a negative x squared. You've got an x squared and you take away two of it. You got something and then you take away two, you've got negative one. Okay. So that's like, that's, let's just write that out. It's like one x squared. Minus 2x squared and that's going to give us a negative x squared and I'm not going to write parentheses in the this. I'm going to put quotes down here because the only thing I really want to operate on at this stage is um, this term making sure we understand that we have an x squared and we're taking away two of them. So now we're one in the hole, okay? Okay, then four x and five x makes nine x, because four something and five are the same thing, makes nine of them. And then we have You know, I don't think I'll we'll write this the way I did. I think it's going to be confusing. The 
I'm just going to say we have a negative three and a negative nine. Okay, what's a negative three and a negative nine add up to? Well, that's negative 12, right? So there we've got it. Okay, how about this? What's all um, this? Five times two x squared plus three x minus four. Okay. How to do this? Well, you apply the distributive law. Okay. It's just plain distributive law. So this is going to be five times two x squared plus five times three x minus five times four. Okay, officially it's plus five times negative four. So it'd be plus a negative 20, but it's still, it's still going to come out negative 20. So when you see a minus here with the distributive law, just put it out in front of it. Okay. Okay, so then we have 10x squared plus 15x minus 20. And you can't do anything more because x squared is a different thing than x. Okay, uh, so you can't combine these. You can't combine unlike powers. Unlike powers are like totally different variables. They're related, but you can't combine them with addition and subtraction. They can multiply them, you can't add them. Okay, now there's a question. How did I know that I could rearrange this like this? Well, it's because when you add or you have a bunch of numbers that are added and subtracted, you can do those additions and subtractions in any order you want. Called the associative law, well, there's an associative law and commutative law. And we haven't talked about the details of how that works. Um, in other words, we have proven that you can do that. But, Kind of assume you've seen that, and if you haven't, it's probably not worth our time to go into those details. Okay, so again, I've got an x squared and a negative two x squared. I put them together here. Now, formally, what I do is I factor out the x squared. And I have the numbers, and I use the distributive law backwards to show that this has to equal negative x squared. We're not going to get that technical. Okay. Here's what we get. Uh, let's try another one now. Let's try. Or this one. Okay, we need to use the distributive law to multiply these. Distributive law says the same thing here, but it says here if five is multiplied by all this, then five is multiplied by every term. Okay, if this thing is multiplied by 2x squared minus five. What you get is this. And this. this times 3x and this times negative 4. Of course, when you multiply this by negative 4, I don't write the negative in the 4, I just apply it out here. Okay. Then this times this is going to be this times this minus this times this. And in other words, the three X multiplies everything in here. Doesn't matter whether you multiply it on the right or left, 
this is going to multiply everything. So I'm going to get Got this 2x squared times 3x minus 5 times 3x. And then we're going to get minus, we're going to have to put parentheses around this, because I'm going to have to multiply 4 by this and 4 by this. So it's going to be minus 6. Now, all I've done here is I've said that. I multiply this by this, it's this times this, and minus this times this. If I have this, well, I'm multiplying by the 3x. So the 2x squared has to be multiplied by 3x, and the negative 5 has to be multiplied by 3x. Okay. See if that makes any sense before we go on with what comes next. Well, yeah, let's let's go ahead and uh, take one more step. This is going to give us six. Well, what is this going to give us? Just what do you get when you multiply two x squared by three x? Now, apply your rules for exponents. Two times three is six. Then that's times x squared. Times x, right? Because again, you got a string of multiplications here. You can group them in any way you want. You can do them in any order you want. So the order we want is multiply the x's and multiply the numbers. Okay. Now what's x squared times x? Well, that's like x squared is x times x. Another x gives you three x's here. So that's going to be six x cubed. We're applying our rules for exponents. X squared times x to the one. You can write that as x to the one if you wish. Uh, you can add the exponents when you multiply same base, same quantity, uh, same third, different powers. We talked quite a bit about how that works. You could write this as x times x. You could write this just an x. So you're going to have x times x times x, and that's x cubed. Okay, so now let's just talk about it a minute. Okay, hopefully everybody sees this week's discussion. Give you a good answer. Uh, five times three x. Well, you can multiply the five by the three. You get 15. The x is just sitting there, no x is to multiply. Well, actually, we have negative 15 x. And I'm going to keep the parentheses here, but I'm going to multiply this, multiply this. 2x squared times 4. Well, we can multiply the 2 by the 4, and that gives us 8. And we still got x squared, so we have 8x squared. And then 5 times 4 is 20. And well, then this is going to give us 6x cubed, as we saw. We're going to have minus 15x. And then a negative distributes through here. It gives negative x squared plus 20. It's going to be a negative of this and a negative of this. And that gives us 6x cubed. We want to write this in decreasing powers of x. It's going to be minus 8x squared minus 15x plus 20. Now, pick any number for x. Any number that you show me with one hand. Okay, I got four. Now, two of you wanted to have four. You weren't looking, you don't have eyes in the back of your hands, so you couldn't see what he's saying. So there's. Yeah. Well, there's a one in five probability that would have happened. Okay. Uh, okay, so fx is four, x squared is 16, right? Can't plug in x squared would be 16. Well, let, let, let's do this.
And then x equals four simply for that. And then do the same thing down here. Okay, so I plug in four here and simplify. I'm going to get. Two times four squared minus five multiplied by three times four minus four. Okay, that's plug it in. Then I evaluate this. Okay. Uh, now, actually, something I wrote it like this, which is a little more, it's fine. It could be written any, either way. Okay, you get the two times the four squared. Okay, the square only applies to the four, it doesn't apply to this two. Order of operations, when you see an exponentiation, you do that before you do any multiplication. Okay, raising the power has to happen before you multiply. Of course, what's in parentheses, it's done before that, but okay. So this gives us two times four squared. Four squared is 16. So we have two times 16 minus five. Three times four is 12. So we have 12 minus four. Well, this gives us 32, you subtract five, you get 27. And there you get eight. 27 times eight is uh, 216, that's not right. Uh, 250 and 50, 160 and 56. So I think it's be 216. I can't say 216 is six cubed. Um, and they have some words. Never mind, that's right, 216. That is six cubed. Okay. Two cubed, that's three cubed. Okay. A little slow spot. Okay, now down here, we get. Six times four cubed minus eight times four squared minus 15 times four plus 20. Now this should come out the same as this. If it doesn't, that means I made a mistake in here. That's not, there's a, there's a finite probability that I made a mistake, just like there is when you do. Okay. Okay. Four cubed is sixty-four. Four squared is sixteen. Fifteen times four is sixty. And this is twenty. Six times sixty-four is three hundred and eighty-four. Uh, this is hundred twenty-eight. Doing that kind of quickly, so I could be wrong. But okay now. I'm going to say 384 plus 20. Well, no. I'm going to do them in order. That's an interesting thing there. Okay, 384. Well, 384 and 20 makes 404. Then I'm subtracting 128. And subtracting 60, so I'm subtracting 198, 188, and 404 minus 188 is 216. Now, of course, you can use a calculator for this. So, why not do it in your head? You can do, I know this. But no, no real need with my with my fees on that. Um, I'm not even hundred percent sure that's right. I didn't really double check my subtraction, but eighty-eight and oh four gives me uh, 
this is to me, it is to others, I just go and check it. So I'm pretty sure it's right. Okay, now my point is, If I followed the rules correctly, this expression and this expression have to have the same value for any answer. If you make an error in any of these steps, they won't be. So you can always check yourself by plugging some random number in for X. You should cut the there. If it doesn't work, then you gotta go back and see what you want to do. It's real easy to miss a step. Okay, we'll also give you another expression. Let's take Tom here. Let's take this one, see what you do with it. Okay. So y'all, I think it's pretty good with the screw well, let's make sure. This is 5x squared times x cubed. Write out this step, don't skip it. Oh, a bunch of arcs or anything. Use the distributive loss to clear what it means. Then we're going to have x 5x squared times a negative. So we're going to do negative 5x squared times 4 plus 5x squared times 7. Now, just to emphasize, this is 5 times x times x times x times x times x. Times x. And we don't really need to write x times x because there's only one x in one x term. We just multiply the five by the seven. Here we have x multiplied by itself 25 times. This is 5x cubed. This is minus so 5 times 4 is 20. And I got three x's. That's x squared, uh, x cubed. This is x cubed, this is x to the fifth. We got 5x, we got x to the fifth. Okay. And then we have 35 x squared. And again, you could plug a number, you know, some small number. In or x and calculate this and it's still going to be a pretty big. But you do that with a calculator uh, and check yourself. You don't have to necessarily do that in every problem because once you get the hang of it, these things are actually cool. Okay, but you've got to be careful. For example, if you multiply x squared times x cubed, it's real easy to get x to the sixth. But your rule is if you multiply x to the a times x to the b, you get x to the a plus b. And the reason for that is, okay, you multiply x squared by x cubed, you get x to the two plus three. Why do you get x to the two plus three? Because that's how many x's you got here, that's how many x's you got here. So you get the total. This many x's plus this many x's gives you this many x's, okay? So you wanna come back to that idea. Um, and you'll, you know, if you're making those mistakes, you'll, you'll get feedback. Open both the same note. Okay. And if you still really messed up, you know, let me know. Remind you. Okay. Okay. So, 
That's Carolina Hall. Okay, so we're going to hold five minutes. Okay. So, a bit of law, and you hopefully, uh, actually, let me take a quick look at uh, what you actually did here. Okay, so we have this product. Uh, what we want to do is we want to write this out step by step. So I'm going to write it out as okay, first of all, the 4x minus 3 multiplies the 2x squared. And then the 4x minus 3 multiplies. Three x, and then we have this multiplying a negative. Better write a negative sign out here. We have four x minus three times four. So we're just done four x minus three times this. Four x minus three times this. Four x minus three minus four x minus three times four. Okay. Then we can write that as. Write this first product using the distributed law multiplied by 2x squared or 4x and by the negative 3. Then we're going to have plus 4x times 3x minus 3 times 3x. And then we'll do that one. And then we're going to have. Minus, we're going to put a big set of parentheses around here. It's going to be 4x times 4 minus 3 times 4. Because the minus applies to the whole product. We're going to expand this whole product. So keep the minus in front of it and have the whole product in parentheses. Then we have. That's 8x cubed. Okay. Because again, we have an x here. We have two x's here. When we multiply it out, we have an x times x times x. And then we have minus 6x squared. Now, x times x is x squared. 4 times 3 is 12. So that's plus 12x squared. 3 times 3x. That would be 9x squared or minus 9x. Then we have minus the quantity 16x minus 12. Now we've got one more step because we've got a distribute negative through here. Um, Okay, so I've just written all these terms as they are. Then I have minus the quantity 16x minus 12. It's going to be minus 16x plus 12. Now, how many x cubes do we have? Well, we got eight of them. That's no other x cubes. So that's going to be 8x cubed. And then what do we have? We have a 12x squared and a negative 6x squared, that's going to leave us 
six of them, right? We got 12 of them, take away six of them, we got six of them. So that's plus six x squared. We have a negative nine x and a negative 16 x. Well, negative nine or something, negative 16 or something gives us negative 25 on that thing. That's what we get from the very last step. How would you do x minus five squared? Now people want to do x squared minus five squared, but that doesn't work. X minus five squared means x minus five times x minus five. Okay. I've done the first step for you. Go ahead and multiply that out and see what you get. And then if you get that, let's try. X plus two cubed. Okay, well, people are having a little trouble with it. Let's try this one for you. But we're not yet applying the principles we have over here. So we do the main principles, just the distributive one. Okay. Now x minus five times x minus five means what? You do x minus five times x, and x minus five times your negative five. Or it's x minus five times x minus x minus five times five. Then we apply the distributive law again. What's x minus five times x? Well, the x is gonna multiply the x, the negative five is gonna multiply the x. So it goes x times x, Minus five times x. That's going to be minus x times five minus five times five. X times x is x squared minus five times x is minus five x. The minus distributes through here gives us a minus five x, and a minus distributes through here gives us a plus. Okay, so you have to use distributive law, and then this gives you what negative five x negative five x is negative ten x. Now, what's this mean? Find out what this means. It doesn't mean x cubed plus two cubed. It does not mean that ever. Okay? You have to write it out as a product of binomial. The binomial means sum of two. Okay? This is a binomial. Okay, you have to write it out as a product of binomials. And in this case, it'll be a product of more than two binomials. Everything you're going to do with multiplying these things is going to be by the distributive. Okay. Now, everybody, I think, saw what to do here. That the cube of this is negative five x times this times this. Now, what are you going to do with this? You don't want to try to do too much at once. What we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to set a parenthesis here. We're going to, 
we're going to multiply this x plus two by this x plus two. And well, that gives us what you think you can understand from what we did up here at the same thing. And that's going to give us x plus 2 multiplied by x times x plus 2 times x plus x times 2 plus 2 times x times x plus 2 times x x plus times 2 plus 2 times 2. And that's going to give us then x plus 2 times x squared plus 4 and x plus 4. And so we got that. Okay, you got that? That's really good. If you didn't, you're getting there. And by the time you get through the open math, uh, you should be okay with it. Now, what do we do with this? Write it down again. Well, multiply x plus 2 by x squared. Actually, I'm going to do this in a little different order. It might confuse you. It might not. Um, but I'm going to write it as let's multiply x by this whole thing. Multiply x by this whole thing. Plus 4x plus 4. Same idea, just a little different order. Instead of multiplying x plus 2 by x squared, and x plus 2 by 4x, and x plus 2 by 4, I can multiply x times all this plus 2 times all this. Okay? You do it either way. And open math will make that more clear. Okay, anyhow, when I multiply this by x, I guess. This. x times x squared is x cubed, x times 4x is 4x squared, and x times 4 is 4x. That seem clear? Hopefully it does. Okay. Might need to do a little more slowly, but we're out of time, so I'm not going to take the time to do this. But if you have a question, stick around now if you can, and I'll answer it. Okay, then we have 2 times all this. Well, that's 2 times x squared. 2 times 4x is 8x, and 2 times 4 is 8. When you get the hang of it, it's really pretty simple. If you just remember to do it and use the distributor form. Okay, well, then what do we have? We got an x cubed. Okay, that's it. Now we got a 4x squared and a 2x squared. That gives us a 6x squared. We got a 4x and 8x, which gives us. 12x. And we've got this h sitting out here in the end. And there's our cube. Um, okay. So hopefully that's enough of an introduction that between that. And the open math videos. And you read your, you know, uh, just you know, read, read what it tells you, take notes of what open math tells you to do. Um, hopefully, we'll pick up on this. Okay. Kind of important. This is intermediate algebra now. Uh, so spend the time you need to. And if you've got questions, let me know. Okay.